I have a little Bialetti. So in the morning I wake up and I was so... I don't so... even know what that is. That's cool. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. I don't Can think a lot it? of people would know what Bialetti is. Oh my God, dude, I'll get it for you. I'll be back in one second. <laughs> it's a Bialetti. <laughs> Honestly, do you know what a beer lady is? Back in back in the days before George Clooney, uh, <laughs> this is how we all made coffee. I just call those Italian coffee machines. I'm Motaz. I'm a reporter at ABC Life. And in my head, I'm healthy, but I probably could be doing better. This is Dr. Sandro DeMaio. His shtick? Food and health. And I've got a lot of questions, so I'm hoping he can help. Have you ever not had a coffee? I can't honestly remember the last time I've not had a coffee. <laughs> I find that by the time I get to the other end of a you know, six hour flight or whatever, I've got a raging headache. Every day at about 9 a.m., I try to get myself a strong almond flat white. Yeah. Right? That's about three shots of coffee um, <laughs> to about 300 mils of liquid. All right, and here's how I worked it out. I figured that because I'm like 193 centimeters and I weigh about 90 kilograms, I would need more caffeine than the average person, right? Right. So, and then I, I remember reading somewhere once upon a time that 400 milligrams of caffeine a day is pretty yeah. safe. And then like a shot of espresso, there's 100 milligrams of caffeine. So I figured like... Um, Very well thought out, Motaz. You yeah, a lot right? of time yeah, into thinking through your coffee order. <laughs> Am I in the green? On average, we recommend people try and cap their coffee, uh, cups of coffee at about four a day, as you said, like 400 milligrams of caffeine. But that's basically an upper sort of limit. So safest is probably around two to three cups a day. But what, what's the saying? No, no cup of coffee is created equal. If it's instant, then obviously it's likely to be a little bit lower in caffeine. Espresso is super uh, concentrated, so you have a higher amount per shot. So it's really easy to get three or four shots into a cup of coffee and it's suddenly not one cup, it's like three serves. So you should be thinking about sort of two to three standard cups of coffee across the day. Once, once that humble bean from Ethiopia enters our body, what, what goes down? So, I mean, coffee does a bunch of things. So it's the caffeine in coffee that most of us crave, and it's a stimulant. So it basically makes you feel more alert, but it also sort of puts you on the fight and flight type response mode. Uh, your heart rate will go a bit faster. You might feel um, a little bit sweaty. And so your body's basically preparing for something the challenge is when nothing then happens, you put yourself in this state of stimulation and there can be some health risks associated with that. Even just psychologically, you know, you're drinking something that is putting your mind in um, a, a slightly more anxious or nervous state, you're, you're on edge. Uh, yeah. What's the best way or the quickest way to get out of that? Is it just a matter of writing it out or do you just, you know, go on an IV drip or something. Really all you can do is just wait it out, but drink drink lots of fluids. My other question is, uh, is coffee addiction a real thing? What we Meanwhile. Yeah. <laughs> the short answer is yes. Um, and basically it's a habituation. So, you know, over time you'll find when you drink a lot of coffee, first of all, you need to drink more of it to get the same results. And that's because your body starts to sort of become used to the caffeine. And then in addition, if you don't drink the coffee, your body will have withdrawals. So yeah, absolutely, you can become uh, both habituated to the coffee, but then you also get the withdrawal symptoms when you don't drink it. Are there any alternatives that sort of have the same effect as coffee that aren't caffeinated drinks? Well, it depends, I suppose, on what, what effect you're going for. Then you know what I mean. What do you mean by that? Well, because like I've seen drinks that are like, oh, this is like Garana ginseng from the Amazon or something. And oh, it's yeah. Got like, okay. And it's not, it's not caffeine, but... Posted. Well, it is. It's just another form of caffeine. Is it actually? It, it has the same effect. Yeah, Garana is a type of caffeine, yeah. So when I'm uh, buying a Garana supplement, I'm actually buying coffee. Well, no, it's not coffee, but it's still a stimulant. It's basically the same as caffeine. Right, so right. it has the same, the same physiological... Uh, results right, right, on your right, body right. as caffeine. The only other thing I would mention, Motaz, is the energy drinks. Not only are they packed with sugar, which is obviously not great for you, um, but they can actually have as much caffeine as two or even three cups of coffee. But if you're drinking energy drinks, then be really careful of then the extra coffee or tea that you add to the day. Care to tell us where taurine comes from? I no, have no idea. That.
move on. <laughs> so, Motaz, have you ever felt the effects of coffee mid-morning? I mean, how, how do you feel an hour after you have your triple shot of espresso? I think I fall under the category of coffee addict. Maybe you should think about reducing your morning coffee to, you know, a single shot or a double shot and then having sort of decaf for the next few and then having another shot of coffee after lunch. Yeah, it's the height, it's the height weight ratio thing I told you about before. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally convinced on it. <laughs>